Well, the ancient copper-making country is a big copper-deficient country. Archaeologists have discovered that bronzes have been used in China about 5,700 years ago. However, in the Song Dynasty, they had to face an embarrassing fact, the supply of copper coins was insufficient. There are many reasons for the short supply of copper coins, one of which is the insufficient output of copper materials. In fact, China's copper resource reserves are not extremely scarce. According to data, in 2020, the global copper reserves are 870 million tons, while China's copper reserves are 34.9 for 79 million tons, accounting for 4% of the world's total reserves, ranking sixth in the world. In China, copper resources are relatively concentrated in spatial location. Mainly distributed in Tibet, accounting for 22% of China's total copper mines. However, with the rapid takeoff of China's economy, the demand for copper materials in the domestic market continues to grow. Since 2005, China has been the world's largest refined copper producer and largest copper consumer for at least 18 consecutive years. In terms of refined copper, from automobiles, trains to ships, aircrafts, from key components of traditional industries to wide applications in high-tech fields, refined copper devices appear in all aspects of our lives. By 2020, China consumed 54% of the world's refined copper products in construction, automobiles, and home appliances. China produces about two-fifths of the world's refined copper, but consumes more than one-half of the world's refined copper. Although Tibet is the place with the largest copper reserves, Tibet has a high average altitude, severe winters, limited infrastructure, and lack of industrial water, all of which pose great challenges to the operation of the mine. Of course, the hardships of natural conditions are not invincible. In fact, in Chile, the country with the largest copper production, there are many large mines with an average altitude above 4,000 meters. So, what mineral resources are there on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau? How should China effectively develop these abundant resources? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today. First of all, we have to make it clear why copper mines are called treasures. After humans entered the technological society, the use of copper became more extensive. Copper is a metal with good ductility, thermal conductivity, and high electrical conductivity which makes it often found in cables and various electronic components. Moreover, copper is a durable metal that has been reheated many times without affecting its mechanical properties. Especially in the field of military industry, whether it is gun parts, engine accessories, or even bullets and shells, a large amount of copper is required as raw material. But for such important resources, China's reserves are less than 4% of the world's. However, corresponding to this scarce copper reserves is China's huge copper consumption. According to data, China's annual copper consumption can reach an astonishing 10 million tons, accounting for about 50% of the world's copper trading volume. Such a contradictory identity also means that China's demand for foreign copper is extremely huge which allows some countries to block the development of China's military industry by restricting copper supply, which is extremely detrimental to China's construction. To get out of this predicament, the search for large copper deposits became the only way out for China. As a result, several exploration teams were set up to search for copper deposits in various regions of China, including the mysterious Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The reason why it is locked on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is mainly because three metallogenic conditions are met here, namely submarine jet flow, continental collision, and porphyry deposition. Among them, submarine jet flow refer to the fact that when hot water containing minerals gushes, if it encounters cold seawater, it will cause minerals to precipitate and form veins. Continental collisions, when tectonic plates squeeze, create deposits, which in turn create associated veins. As for porphyry deposition, it is more complicated. Its essence means that when magma meets groundwater, minerals in groundwater will precipitate and accumulate, 
and finally form or heaps. As long as one of these three conditions is met, metal veins are likely to form, and the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. As a product of plate extrusion, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau meets all three conditions at the same time, which means that there must be mineral deposits under the plateau, and they should also be abundant. Of course, it is true. The Qinghai Tibet Plateau has not failed people's expectations. The mineral resources discovered on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau have far exceeded our expectations. The country with the highest copper reserves in the world is Chile, with reserves as high as 200 million tons. The second highest country is Peru with 92 million tons of reserves. In the Qinghai Tibet Plateau region, China's proven reserves have reached 80 million tons. In addition, in the permafrost zone of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, there is also a huge amount of combustible ice stored, with reserves as high as 35 billion tons of oil equivalent. What does that mean? Well, let me put it this way. Changqing Oilfield, which has the highest oil and gas production in China, only produces more than 50 million tons of oil and gas a year. The reserves of combustible ice on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau are equivalent to the output of the Changqing oil field for more than 700 years. Not only that, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is also rich in gold resources. As of 2020, the world's proven gold reserves are about 50,000 tons. The country with the highest gold reserves is South Africa, with reserves of about 31,000 tons. Previously, China's ascertained gold resources were 1,790 tons, ranking fifth in the world. However, in the Qinghai Tibet Plateau region, China has discovered that there are more than 2,000 tons of gold deposits underground. Why are the mineral reserves on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau so rich? This is because hundreds of millions of years ago, the Qinghai Tibet Plateau was still an ocean, with excellent conditions for mineral development. Later, after the impact of the Indian Plate, the geology here has been greatly changed. Over a long period of time, through plate movement, impact and extrusion, magmatic activity, etc., the Qinghai Tibet Plateau has extremely high mineral reserves. However, China has yet to fully exploit these deposits. Part of the reason is that the climate on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau is harsh, and China's technological level is limited. It is necessary to wait for technological breakthroughs before large-scale development. Another part of the reason is that China wants to use the Qinghai Tibet Plateau as its resource area for combat readiness. China is now gradually reducing mineral mining and importing minerals from other countries instead. The purpose is to protect China's mineral resource reserves. In this way, even if a war breaks out in the world, China will have enough mineral resources. Today's Russia-Ukraine war is a good example. Europe is overly dependent on Russia for energy. Once a war breaks out, the whole of Europe will be affected. However, with the discovery of more mineral resources in China, some contradictory voices have also begun to spread. Some people think that the development and utilization of coal, iron, gold, copper and other resources is destroying the environment and at the same time cutting off the road for future generations. After all, these resources are non-renewable resources, or it will take a long time to regenerate. Because of this, new energy and renewable resources have become a hot topic nowadays, and they have also begun to be widely used in daily life. Such as nuclear energy, solar energy, and wind energy, these are the focus resources in the new era. But it is undeniable that for now, most metal minerals are irreplaceable, and the development of these minerals will not stop in the future. In the future, the 80 million tons of copper and 20 million tons of gold hidden in Tibet will still be China's strategic reserve resources, and they will also occupy an important position in China's economic development. Okay, that's all for today. See you.